sorry about that. <laughs> My father-in-law is an Oregon Does duck, so. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't have a dog in the fight, but I'm sorry for you. <laughs> well, we get started with Stephen, who's got the first question. We'll start with Hoinsey. We'll get you the microphone. How did you pick Cobb for the starter game one? Uh, he's he's lined up for it. He's on uh, the, the right rest, and you know what Alex has done for us has been great. So we're excited to give him the ball in game one. It was obviously a small sample size of him coming back off the IL, but what did you guys see and like from what you saw from him in the last series? Yeah, I thought, you know, obviously not throwing a pitch in a game for 30, 40 days and coming back and his stuff was there. The Vila was there. The stuff was there. Alex has pitched in this league for a really long time, and we trust him to take the ball. All right, we'll go to Ben. Um, in the DS, you obviously got a lot out of guys like Class A and Smith. How does that balancing act change for you guys, if at all, going into this series? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've relied on our bullpen, you know, all year long. and But now in a seven-game traditional, seven games in nine days, you have to do it a little bit differently. We can't, you know, with the days off that we had in the DS, it allowed us to really push the bullpen more than typically. But, um, you know, obviously these are the guys that helped us get to this point. They're going to be pitching. We'll go to Lauren in the third row, Stephen. Hi. Uh, we just spoke with Cobb, and he had glowing reviews of his time playing with you. How would you describe your relationship with him, and how does it help to bridge that gap from, you know, player to manager, just knowing you have that, like, robust relationship? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously Alex and I have known each other for a really long time, played together, you know, through the minor leagues a little bit in the big leagues, and it, it hasn't changed a whole lot, you know. We... we talk to each other the same way we did when we played together. I think there's a little bit of familiarity there. And, you know, I'm myself. I don't I don't act any different than I did as a player. I'm the same person that I've been and always will be. So we have a great rapport. Um, I trust him. He trusts me. And it's been a lot of fun having him. And we'll go to Mandy in the second row. How would you describe uh, Andres and Brian's relationship? <laughs> I, I think they do everything together. So um, it, it's really fun. I mean, I've I've played and seen some people, you know, middle infield combos that they're they're close. They know each other. They know what they're thinking. They know where they're going to be. They know what they're going to do, and it, it's a close relationship. Um, and Hemi and Roke are very very close. They're good friends. They they push each other to be great, and um, it's just fun to watch them play middle infield. And we've asked you about the defense a trillion times this year, but just how much comfort does it bring you guys when you know that those are the two up the middle for you? I, it, I love it. Every time you see a ground ball going towards the middle of the field, you're excited to watch, see what they're going to do. I mean, they've both made, you know, individually and together some unbelievable plays all year long, and uh, it'd be hard to find a, a combo better. The Ron on the first row. Staying with pitchers lined up, would Bybee be game two? Yeah, Tanner Bybee will start game two. Any idea beyond that? Or no? And given what happened in the series two years ago, would you expect uh, the fans here to have a rough reception for Naylor? I wasn't here two years ago, so I'm, I can't comment on that. But um, the reception a couple months ago was pretty good. So I'm sure it'll be the same. Other questions? Uh, ben in the fourth row. Just further to the pitching staff, uh, ahead of a game like yesterday where you had uh, obviously really high stakes um, and, and you end up taking out Boyd earlier than um, than might traditionally happen, what, what's the communication like for for Boyd and also for your relievers ahead of a game like that? Uh, I mean, we the communication was all hands on deck from the pitch number one. Um, you know, and Matt, I didn't expect him to be happy with the decision or even understand it. Um, I. I'm always open and honest with the players. I tell them exactly what I'm thinking, exactly why. Don't have to agree or like it, but here's how it is. And, um, you know, it wasn't the script. It wasn't the plan. It was just it felt like the right time to go to Cade and get into the bullpen. And, you know, in a winner take all, coming out of an off day and you have everybody with bullets, it just felt like it was the right time. So, so that's kind of a feel thing that you're watching with your coaches in the moment? Yeah, I mean, we, we talked before the game about when different situations could come up. But I don't ever want to go into a game saying we're for sure doing this. I want to watch the game and see how it's going, watch the pitcher, watch the at-bats that they're having. Um, th there's there's no formula 
it, it's you use the information to be educated, and then you have to watch the game. We'll go to the third row on your right, Stephen. Hey, Stephen. How you doing? Great. Um, I know you've talked about your offense, uh, kind of a collective effort all year, but um, with a guy like Stephen Kwan, the way he's been swinging the bat, obviously it's the last series, how would you kind of just describe the feeling that what he brings to your offense uh, getting into a series like this? Yeah, I mean, w w the way Steven swung the bat this last series was, was fun to watch. Um, he's one of the best complete hitters in our game. I mean, he's got power. He puts the he finds the barrel. He finds grass on the outfield. Uh, he's just he's a good hitter, and he'll take what the pitcher gives you. And if you make a mistake, he's got the power to hit out of the yard. Um, he's he's our spark plug. He gets us going, and he definitely did that in the DS. On your far right in the second row, Dan. Steven, the, uh, the the Yankees are considered pretty prohibitive favorites here. Do you embrace that role or underdog role, or are you ignoring it? What's your thought process going into the series? Uh, we worry about us. You know, I, we've taken that with every series every all year long and we can control what we can and we know the yankees are good we've they've played us tough this is a really good team we're about to go up against but we're confident in who we are and that's all we can control is us so it's going to be a fun series and we're really looking forward to it we'll go to mandy then ron obviously one of your strengths this year has been the fact that it could be anyone on any given night in this offense to help you win to know how you guys made it through the first round, but then also know that Jose could lock into another level at any point. What kind of comfort does that bring you, knowing that you guys accomplish what you accomplish, maybe without Jose being ridiculous levels like he always is? Yeah, I, I mean, it's when Jose's going, it, there's no one better, you know, and I think that's the beauty of, of Jose, and he's one swing away at all times. I mean, there's not one set of eyes that's not locked in on him when he's at the plate, and he's electric and you know he got big hits when he needed to in the series and it helped us win a couple games so i think you know he's always one swing away from from going off and and nailer same way and we've got a lot of guys that, that are going to step up but like you said the beauty of this team has been a different person every night steps up but ron Earlier today, Booney said basically with uh, Ramirez underappreciated as part of his first name at this point in baseball and that it shouldn't be that everyone knows it. Are you surprised if some people still consider him somewhat under the radar? I think, I think in circles he is, but if you ask anybody working in baseball, they, they don't think he's underappreciated or any of that. I mean, he's one of the elite players in this league. You know, he's a top five player in this league every year. And... In the baseball circles, everybody knows that and talks about it. And also, when the front office was first considering signing Matt, did they bounce the idea off you, and what thoughts did you give them? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, right when they had the thought, you know, I got on the phone and called him. And, uh, you know, I played, played against Matt, you know, watched him play for a long time, and just getting to know him and hearing what he'd been through with his rehab and the things he'd been doing to stay ready, we were 100% confident that he was going to step in and do what he's done. What did you know about him from playing with Just, him? He knows how to pitch. Um, he knows how to pitch. He's a great human being. Um, he fits in this clubhouse tremendously. He's a leader in this clubhouse. And um, all, never liked facing him when he was pitching against our team, and uh, we wanted him. <clears throat> Other questions for Voter? Quincy? Steven, the last time uh, you guys were here, the Yankees really showed a lot of power early in in the game in the series. How do you uh, counteract that? You just got to make pitches. This is a really good lineup, really good team, and we know we've seen them. They've done it to us. They've they've hit the ball to the yard against us, and so we just have to make pitches. We have we're, our game planning is always really good, and we just have to execute. Anything else for Steven? Lauren. Time for the hard-hitting question. I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, but what is just so special about this team this season? I think from the day we got to spring training, they bought into the belief that we could do this, and they've rallied around it, and we're really good. This is a really good team that we have, and we believe in ourselves, and the guys believe in each other, and this is the closest group of guys I've ever seen in a clubhouse. They, they care for each other. They have fun. They're always laughing middle of the game we're we're laughing we're having a good time um we we talk trash to each other constantly myself included they're all over me um we just we just have a good time and i think these are really good players who care about each other go to jeff in the fifth row on your right steven 
I'm sorry, you teed it up. What are they all over you for? Uh, you know, usually it's if a catcher makes a you know bad catch, they're like that boy voter. You know, they I, they know I couldn't catch, so um, you know things like that. They, they're just we're always giving each other a hard time.